So in this one, you can pause it and read the problem. It's a little bit different than what we were doing before. We want to know it's this thing flying through the air, and then eventually gravity is going to take over and it's going to start falling down. And we want to know the chunk of time that it's above 3,000, more than 3,000 feet above the ground. So what I'm going to do is just copy that. I'm going to open up Desmos. We'll go to the graphing calculator and I'm going to paste that. Now I'm going to look and make sure that that, that actually did it right. And it looks like it did everything fine except that t squared. I'm going to backspace, use the caret, and then use a 2. There we go. Um, and then I'm just going to press enter. So over here, I now need to see what that graph looks like. I'm going to hold on the shift key. And that'll let me squeeze the axes a little bit here. So I can see. Um, a little more. Just keep holding the shift here. Okay. So you can see the idea of it here. This thing is getting thrown up, going really, really high, and then gravity is taking over, and then bam, it hits the ground. And so what they're asking is, when is it above 3,000? Um, to get an exact picture, I mean, we could zoom in there. I'm going to put the line y equals 3,000, just so I can I can see that a little better. And I think this will also, yeah, it'll let me click. Um, so 3.713, that's the X value as I'm going across here. That's when I first hit the 3000 point. And then if I click over here, that 46.287 is when it's been way up in the air. That's when it comes down and hits that 3,000 foot elevation again. So in between those two points um, is what I would put here. I'd put the 3.7, or it says to the nearest hundredth. So I'd go 3.71 to 46.29. And um, once we hear back from the professor, we know that you can do the same thing on the TI graphing calculator. I can show you how to do that. Okay, here's another quadratic question, and it tells you the stopping distance. In other words, this here is our stopping distance, uh, and it's based on driving at a speed of x. So this x is how fast we're driving, and this over here is how long it'll take us for the car to stop. So the faster we're driving, the longer it takes us to stop. And here it says, what distance will it take you to stop while driving on a wet road if you're driving 65 miles per hour? So the, the big issue here is, do you plug in the 65 over here, or do you plug it in for X? And in this case, since this 65 miles per hour is the speed we're driving, um, that's where we would plug it in. We'd plug in the 65 for, for each of these. If we did, um, on a different problem, if we had to plug it in here, how would we solve that? That's where then we would subtract 65 from both sides and we'd have zero. You'd basically want to get zero on the, the left side and then you're solving, you're using that quadratic equation, that quadratic formula that I showed you. But that's not what you have to do here. Luckily, this is the easier type where you're just plugging the number in over here and then typing those in the calculator. Um, let's see what the next one is. So vertex, I think you've done one similar to that. Uh, this one right here, Again, stopping distance this time is C of X, speed of X miles per hour. So X represents your speed. Um, and again, they give you the speed. So this is a plugging in for X type of question. And uh, this is something similar to what we did. Okay. Okay, this 
type of question here, you just need to come up with the equation itself. And they, they give the equation to you, um, but it still has these constants in that are, um, they're not in the form of a number. And so this is a matter of figuring out where these two plug in for V0 and Y0. Um, so V0 is, V stands for velocity or speed. And then the zero just means the initial starting point. So that we have the initial velocity right here. And y would be the height, and zero would be the initial height. Um, so we have that right there. And once you plug those two in, you'll have your equation. This here is the same problem that you were showing me, we have the same same formula, but it's asking a different thing. It says, what's the population on January 1st, 2023? So here we actually have the time and we need to find the population. And in the other one, we had the population and we needed to find the time. Uh, this one, it's we have to work a little harder to figure out what our value of T is. So January 1st, 2012 and we're going into the future uh, 11 years, basically. If you subtract 2023 minus 2012, you would get 11 years later. So that means we're plugging in 11 for the T. Uh, this is similar to that first one we looked on in the video, except here we wanna go 5,000 instead of 3,000. So we would type in 5,000, and I'm not sure, yeah, it looks like this equation changed a little bit too for that one. Okay, here's the question we were looking at, um, but we had never actually done. Let me just show you how to go through and do this on Desmos, which is uh, essentially what you would do on the TI-84 later. So I'm gonna cut and paste into here. And then I need to fix a couple things. So one, this should be T squared. I'm gonna select it, just delete it, and then hit that caret above the six and put a two there. And then the other thing, it took me a while to figure this out. Desmos doesn't like commas, so we need to get rid of that. And then we'll get our nice plot. So we need to find out when we'll reach 55,800. So let's put another line, y equals 55,800. So you can see that our population curve will hit that point at two places. But here, this is time along the x-axis. Um, that's a negative value, so that, that doesn't make sense. So this is the one, this is the one we want. I'm gonna hold down on the control key and zoom in just a little bit there. And then I'm gonna try to see if I can click. Yep, if I click and hover, I can see that the place when I hit the 55800 is 183 years and 0.988 months. And it says, um, okay, so I guess we actually have to do it here. So this would be, what do we say? 183 years past our starting point. So this is our starting point. So 2012, um, 2012 plus 183. So that's the year, 2,195, 2,195. That's what would go here. And then here's that month part that I was talking about that's, that's a little bit weird. Um, so we want to look at that 0.988 portion down there. Um, so let's take that on a calculator. Let's take clear 0.988 and we'll multiply that by 12 since there's 12 months in a year. And so this tells me how many months have already passed in this year and where I'm at right now. So in this case, um, I've gone through November and I'm this far of the way through the next month, which is December. So I should put uh, December of, and what was that again? December of 2195. And I want to see if I'm getting this right. 
Okay, so that's how you do that one then.